Hello. Yes, I'm talking to you. Incompetent enthusiast here. And today is the day. We're going to be installing the Voss switch auxiliary switch setup in the Gladiator. This is the uh, the six button setup instead of uh, what uh, Mopa provides you, which is uh, four buttons. So let's see what we can do with this installation. So let's open up the box. All right. So, let's see what we have here. Okay, piece of foam. We don't need that. Tie wraps. We may need that. A nice sticker. Let's see what we can do with that. Then a little bag. Let's open that up. Ah, okay. This is the actual switch panel with the six buttons here and an on and off switch and the mount brackets because it will go into the cubby here below in front of the, um, the shifter. Okay, let's get rid of that piece of paper. Ah, okay. This is the additional cubby if you have a non Rubicon, I suspect, because then you will have here one large cubby hole. I have a Rubicon, so there I actually have my uh, my front area lockers, uh, so I don't need this piece. Then, ah, okay, this is the actual complete unit itself, which goes under the hood. Man, this thing is well built, it's heavy. It's very solid. It's beautifully made, I might add. There's a piece of rubber here with a sticky tape, dual sided tape. Uh, this bracket will go under the hood on the left side here, uh, on the driver's side in my case, because I've got a left hand drive car. I've got two clamps. Let's open them up. Uh, look at this, by the way. You see here, this is the waterproofing to feed the auxiliary cables into the box. Um, again, very, very nicely engineered. Very sturdy, high gauge cable to go to the battery. Okay, these are the signal wires. This is a ground and a signal wire that goes to the fuse box. I, I'm not going to do that. I want my unit to be able to come on even if I don't have the car in auxiliary mode or run mode and this is the one that goes into the cab this fused cable this one is also fused very nice so anyway so I just opened this up let's see what's inside uh, okay we have six relays so each auxiliary port has its own relay and then <clears throat> you will end fuses there as well. Each one is fused. Very nice. It's got a very nice recessed rubber sealed lid here to ensure it stays waterproof inside. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So let's close that up again. Now this install exists of three main pieces. What happens under the hood, what happens inside the cab here, the dashboard, and then finally the third one uh, is uh, feeding the cable from the engine bay into the cab. And there seem to be two main ways that people do this. Apparently the instructions apparently say that you feed it through uh, the window and then you have to lower the window. Now that sounds more hassle than it's worth because there are holes through the firewall 
and there is a grommet on the driver's side below that goes into the engine bay. Uh, so that's what most people have been using, I believe. I have seen other guys that actually have gone through the hole, removing the, uh, the corner plate there, lowering the window. Man, that is too much work. I don't, I don't want to do that. So I'm actually going to go for that grommet and feeding it straight into the cab. Um, I'm already starting to sweat here because the temperature here is uh, already 38 degrees Celsius. So let's get this uh, show on the road because um, I don't want to spend out any time longer than I have to be out here because it's steaming here in Dubai where I am. Good. I think what I'll start doing is First of all, feed that cable from the engine bay into the cab. Because that will then give me an opportunity to work inside the car after I've done that. And rip this dash apart and put that panel together. So, let's get started. Now, step one is actually very easy because you can actually see the grommet right there you see that with the white ring around it it's just a, a plastic grommet I've already pushed it out with my finger from inside so now I'm gonna go under the hood find it and pull it out on the other side so that's very very easy now I'm actually looking at these instructions here and they literally do say if you look at the top paragraph point three that they want you to lower the windscreen to put this cable through. Now, I've actually pushed out this grommet in the firewall down here in, in, in two seconds flat. So that makes absolutely no sense to me. Because um, if we're going to go on this side here, you see that this grommet actually has fallen out by itself already. And you can see the hole right there. Look at this. It's a massive hole. So why would you go through all the trouble of doing that if you have access to the food well in two seconds? It really makes no sense. Anyway, the box is actually going to go, going to go here. You remove this bolt and they've supplied an additional bolt there and it will sit in this area here. But what I want to do now is feed through this, this control wire into my cap. So let's see if I can get that on camera. Okay, there's, there it's going. Now, don't worry, I'm not forgetting the fact that I put the grommet back on to seal that hole. This is why I've actually opened up this cable from both sides, right? So I can put on the cap, I can put on the cap on this side, seal the hole, and then go from there. So, but anyway, right now, with a bit of luck, I should already, surely, see this cable lying here. And here we are. Now, how easy was that? Who wants to lower their windshield and go through all of the pain of removing this thing? Okay, that's just simple enough. I mean, it's four uh, T40 bolts with the standard kit that is supplied, but See, I mean, I've, I've got a snorkel there, for instance. So that's a pain in the ass. Then I have to remove my snorkel as well. Then I have to go through all of the steps to remove my windshield, lower it down, blah, blah, blah. And now, in one minute, the cable is in the cab. And I can actually already start working on the inside now, removing the trim. But first, what I'm going to do is... Uh, actually fix that grommet punch a hole in it okay wish me luck so now let's see how we can drill a little hole in this grommet let's start with a smaller drill Okay, the 
just pile it all down. It should be almost there again. We're just freewheeling this. Okay, and there you have it. One grommet in place on top of the control wire. Just make sure there's no knots in it. Okay, that's all fine. It's getting a little bit too intense out here now in 40 degrees Celsius, which is close to 110 Fahrenheit. So I think I've deserved a break and I'm gonna have myself a glass of water. And then we'll continue with step two, which is mounting the box and step three, ripping the dash out and putting the switch in and ideally putting the dash back the way it came out. And we're back. So this, So let's get this back to its little hole here. Pop it back in. There we go. That was extremely e easy. That is where I want it. So now that we've done that corner there, I deliberately didn't mount the boxy to give myself some more working space to get into that little corner there. But now that we've finished there, we can place the control box over here. So there we have it. Let me get these uh, these bolts out. They look like a 10 mil, I guess. Ah, okay, just some paint on it. Over spray from spraying the car. Okay, there we go. Let's get this one straight back while we're at it. Here we have the other 10 mil bolt provided in the box together with the, I would imagine it's a, it's a fuse for a wire if you want to hook it up to the ignition switch. That's, wow, that is not going anywhere and there is about, I don't know, less than half an inch but there's a space between these little pipes here. And so now, let's take my control wire. There's a little notch in here. I mean, as usual, right? So you can only plug it in in one way. Okay, that is tight. Now, for my next trick. This is going to be the ground and that signal wire that we're not going to use. So that I will just tidy up some like this. However, it needs to go to that side. And I want it nice and tidy. Let's have a look. See, this needs to end up here at the battery terminal. So let's just remove that for a moment right so now for my next trick I need to lift up this there we go this goes underneath and this goes straight back where it came from there's a little post that this metal bracket this bracket has got a hole here in the center and there's a pin sticking up, so to secure it from wobble, I'm sure. So you need to make sure it goes back in that. But how tidy is that? Look at that. I like it. Now, during filming, my iPhone decided that uh, it had uh, enough and needed a break switched off because of uh, high temperature so let's see how long it lasts now but anyway we have the cable here back now at the battery bay the fuse box i'm going to probably stick here with double-sided tape or something i'll figure it out on the battery here i see there are three terminals 
the two inner ones, the inner one and the middle one are used. The outside one here was not used. So I'm actually attaching my cable to that unused terminal. This is a 12 mil, not a 10 mil. Then here I will put a cable tie that was provided anyway. And then this I will fix somewhere here on the back wall. All right. Uh, Let's just remove this one. Very easy. Put it on there. Close it up. And bolt it down. Okay. We have positive and, and negative in position. So now what I want to do is just tidy it up a little bit and get rid of some of that excess that we have here in terms of the cable ties. So let's just snip these off. One more. And one more. And one more. Okay. And this one here, if I can reach it. There we go. Okay, that will fall on the floor somewhere, I'm sure. And then this one. Gone. And this one. Gone. All right, there we go. So now, let's see if we have a live implementation here. So here we are back inside the cab of the Gladiator with the little panel and the control wire that we pulled through. Now, as we already know, this panel connects to nothing else other than itself, its own cable. So before I start ripping out any dashboard panels and all that, I'd like to test it. So let's plug it in again. It's got the little notch, a little hole here. So line them up, plug it in. Well, I don't even need to tighten it, but anyway. Wow, look at that. We have liftoff. We have lights on. And if I switch the power button, Bam! How cool is that? So at least we know it works. On and off. With a very satisfying click, I might add. These little relays behind these buttons here are very satisfying. Now what happens if I press one of the auxiliary switches? So let's switch. Bam! On, it goes orange. You see that? So if it's off, it just lights up white. Of course, you're supposed to put these stickers on them. Right, let's have a look here. See, there's plenty, plenty stickers. stickers. Uh, too many stickers, in fact. Uh, there is uh, something for everything, including stealth, including whip lights, passenger and driver seat heating, Sasquatch, Horn, GPS, another Sasquatch, Cargo, Targeting. So I can even put a visor on the hood of my car and target something. I was going to say something inappropriate. Let me not do that. Um, and then use this as a fire switch after a target. Anyway, let's uh, go through the buttons on on, 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 on. Now, does it have a memory? If I switch this off, will it come on in the position that I switched it off in? So in other words, do all the accessories now come on if I switch the power on? Let's see. And yes, they do. Let's just do some random switching on and off. So I've got these, now these three. I'll switch it off. Now, if it has memory, then it should come 
on with this one, this one, and this one. Let's see. And yes, it does. How beautiful is that? I love it. Okay, so we know this works. So now we're going to the next phase, which is tying up the inside and ripping off panels and fitting this cable to the auxiliary switch. We're gonna put that in this cubby hole here, which means that we need to remove this control panel. We need to remove this panel to get access to this and replace it with that. Now I've, I've removed this already a number of times. Uh, now you're supposed to use a, um, a tool for this, but I mean, with my, in my case, you see, because I've done it a few times. The first time is extremely stiff, but if you've done it a few times already, it just pops out, to be honest, as you see. Do it carefully because there's brackets and you don't want to break anything. Also, I've got my uh, throttle control on here. So I will have to reposition that again. Now there's only two cables. They are squeeze and pull and squeeze and pull. There we go. Now we have exposed the, um, the screw that we need to remove. Um, so let me get my tools for that. So then the bottom panel needs to come out and as I said I've already done this a few times but you just grab it in the corner here and gently you can see I, I pulled some cables gently gently click it loose click it loose and just remove the whole thing so as you can see you now have access to the full panel I've just pulled it out and turned it and this is the box if you remember from the front it was in that corner i've pulled it and turned it so now it's obviously on this side and here we see 5.5 millimeters okay so we're going to remove those now there is one two three four of them we'll pull those out and we'll put the other one back in its position Right, we have a major victory. As you can see, the, um, the dash is lit up here because the panel is in place. There we go. It's all screwed in. All the cables are obviously in place. I have reconnected the top panel and why have I done that? I have done that because of this specific little button here. The car is now in a run mode. So the car is idling, which means I have <laughs> air conditioning. Yes, 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 yes. So now I can actually survive in this car while I'll put everything back together again. So now we're going to just follow the reverse steps. These things just click in place, right? So it's not rocket science. I'm going to click this one back in its place. Then click this one back in its place. I'll have to uh, glue, glue my little uh, throttle control back in the corner as well. I've taken the opportunity, by the way, to, uh, to reroute some of these scales nicely. Uh, off camera I've actually removed this bezel which again just pulls off it's just a click bezel behind that there are one two three four screws which means you can then remove this whole um, screen assembly and then I've routed these cables nicely in there because I need this cable to get my uh, CarPlay to work out of this media port here so it's not only for charging, it also gives me CarPlay, which means that I've got my um, my Apple apps, specifically uh, Waze and my music is what I use most uh, on my screen here. But I hate, I hate, I hate 
a mess in my car especially with dangling cables so this cable I need for my uh, camera this cable I need for my iPhone there will be possibly one more cable coming uh, when I mount my tablet on here okay then I'll just rip it open again it's not a big deal um, and that's it but right now we're just gonna click these panels back into place and tidy up the uh, control wire and uh, zip tie it somewhere under the dashboard so let's do that now while I enjoy my air conditioning and there it is mission completed